Oh, yeah. 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 Dear God, we thank you for those who serve the city of St. John. We ask for wisdom for the council members as they make decisions. Give them wisdom to make decisions that surpasses any personal interest. Help the discussions between the council members and others in attendance to be direct and clear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Additions to the agenda. We have BG Consultants, um, Letter of Resignation from Planning Commission from Marshall Sanders, Summer Help for the Office. Do we have a particular spot we want those to go? BG Consultants will be in citizen comments. The letter, resignation letter can be um, in the business, and the summer help will be in the so. Are there any questions or any further additions to the agenda? I have one, Mayor. No. Can you, under me, can you add replacement of uh, body worn cameras, please? Say that again, please. Replacement of body worn cameras. the Spay Neuter Assistance Program, and St. John has donated um, $500 to that program last year. They, they did, donated that last year. And I was just going to give you an update on what, where the money has gone and what the status is. So far, over the last year, only two people have used the program. Um, the balance of the account is now $420. Um, it, it was used to, I think, $2. two, two dollars. But, um, what we would like to do is just to continue to do the program, maybe do a little advertising um, to try to get a little more participation and, and use up the rest of the funds. I'm sure there's need. There always is. But that's, that's the status. So. They have funds still. We still have funds. We don't need anything. I just so, yeah. said last year that I would tell you what. Appreciate the update. All right. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. And I'll apologize if I mispronounce your name. Sid Arpin. Good evening. Good evening. I'm with BG Consultants in Hutchinson, and last week the uh, city has solicited for an uh, engineering firm to assist them with the preliminary engineering report for an application on a community development block grant for a special round and selected us, so I just want to come by and say thank you and let you know that we'll be working on that in a timely manner. The special application round needs to be submitted by June 1st, so it is very timely. Uh, just wanted to visit with you a little bit about what is being uh, proposed for, what's being uh, going to be submitted. We're looking at a uh, sidewalk improvement along the First Street Avenue corridor from the highway west of Monroe and uh, Quite frankly, in looking at that corridor and trying to find the strength of an application to CDBG, you know, for a walkability uh, uh, connection, uh, if we were to look at maybe swinging it a couple blocks north to the community center, that would that would be a strong suit to say that we're trying to take the uh, basically the First Avenue neighborhood and some of the uh, uh, patrons on that area and basically connect them into the downtown area or to the community center. Uh, Probably cost-wise, we're, we're looking at something that's going to be within the realm of what the uh, what the grant funding uh, window is. They are two thousand dollars per beneficiary on the application, with a maximum of three hundred fifty thousand. 
we're going to be well under that, but it'll be something around the number of beneficiaries times 2,000. So in looking at that as being our budget, we're looking at what's the best, strongest application to make to try to get the funds. If you're familiar with the funds, it's a basically 90% state funds through the block grant and 10% community funds. Uh, which I'm not sure how St. John's planning on that, but there's a, you know different ways to come up with your match. Uh, wanted to check to see if there was any desires, expectations from the council as to what we're pursuing to make sure it gets looked at because in two weeks we're going to have our work done and I'm not sure if you have another meeting in two weeks <laughs> between now and then, so this is kind of the opportunity to get your input before coming back with what we see as the cost of an improvement that'll, that'll you know, pay will take and start doing the public notices and write the grant with. Does anybody have any comments, any questions, um, any areas of particular interest they'd like to see? Yeah. As an engineer, anything technical too would be fun, you know, I'd like to hear what your thoughts are or what your on expectations First Street, are. From Kenwood on to 281, how are you going to do that with the drainage ditch? Uh, in looking at it, I think what we would propose is that it would be on the north side of the road, right up on the right-of-way. And we probably would terminate it before it got to the highway. Because I don't think there's going to be anything we can resolve between now and two weeks that would allow us to stay that we can be on KDOT right-of-way with the sidewalk and, and tie it into anything else. So really what we're looking at isn't necessarily going to tie it to the highway, maybe a half a block to the west, stop at the out, if it, I don't know, if, is there an alley or is that an easement, that, the power poles? So what we would anticipate is using the church as probably the stopping point. And then anything that goes on further would have to be a different funding source, because anything that is not resolved before June 1st is a negative to you in this application. It's got to be ready without complications, otherwise it's not going to score well. And so if it's something about, well, we're going to try to see if we can get KDOT to let us go under there right away, or we don't have this you know, special right away that you're going to need because the ditch is, is there and you've got to be off, off of it, then, uh, then that'll probably hurt I'm talking you. about the drainage ditch on First Street. Right, that's why we're saying we would have room up through the church beyond the church, that's where we don't think we would have room without going on to private property with right away. But the whole idea was to get it to the gym, right? That's what I thought was And what I was alluding to is that as far as a community improvement, the connectivity of that corridor, even though it doesn't tie into one specific business, if it ties to the community center, is like a lot more highly by CDBG people that, that you're not you know, necessarily tying a business and benefiting them, but you're benefiting people getting to the community center. So you're kind of reversing it so that those folks from there have walkability to the community center. That, that to me would be, in my opinion, would, would score better points as an ultimate connection as opposed to say we're going to tie them to one business. Because, you know, whether you say we're tying them to Dollar General or where you say you're tying them to Dillon's, you know, you, you aren't necessarily just making that connection. You're helping out the whole quarter, getting from one end of town to the other, and then they can spread out to wherever they want to go. We just would probably hurt us to try to say we're going to get all the way to Dollar General when we don't have the corridor secured. And I don't think you do, unless that was a, if that was an alley where it was city right away, then you have it secured, but if it's just an easement, you, you would have to negotiate and acquire right away, and usually if you don't have that already done, when you make an application, they see that as a, uh, something that if you don't get, the improvement doesn't get done. So we're, we're suggesting that we extend it as far as we know we can without any complications, without any hang-ups, and that just leaves you know 200 foot that's not done that if for whatever reason, Dollar General wants to have a connection to this new side, new improvement. You know, they can come up with potentially a acquire the corridor that that would allow it to happen, or you know, work on it in, in the future under when the opportunity presents itself to make that connection. 
but right now, under the time frame you're at, uh, that would be iffy to say that we could do that. But I think it's not iffy to say we could go all the way to the community center and and by the school. So that that really makes it more of a connect, connection with uh, with the surveyed area, which again has to meet the low to moderate income threshold with a destination. back to you the next time, you'll have options. And that is, we'll have the cost of going from Monroe to uh, where we think we can go to the east and still maintain. We'll even have the cost to go all the way to the highway and then the right of way is just an if, you know, question mark as to what it would cost to acquire that. But we'll also have the cost to go to the Witt Center and then we'll also have the cost to go all the way to Maine to, to allow that connectivity. Assuming that the low to moderate income or the benefit district has enough beneficiaries to allow us to budget that amount, if it allow us to budget two hundred fifty thousand and it only costs one hundred fifty thousand to go to, to Monroe, then we'll we'll keep going and then give you that option what you want to go for. Well, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. What we look for, I personally look forward to working with you here in St. John. I've come to the community quite a bit. My in-laws are here, so I'm really first on some of the activities you got going on. And always like to see the improvements. Okay. I mean, <laughs> oh, oh, we'll start over there and whatever's left, but I can get you more. <coughs> All right. Okay, if there's no other questions, uh, again, I'll get with Faye and we'll probably plan a public hearing here at some point in the next few weeks. All right. Thank okay, you thank much. you. All right. Consent agenda. <coughs> Approved minutes for regular meeting of 421-2015. Approved minutes for special meeting of 428-2015. Approved appropriation ordinance 0501-2015 in the amount of $8,527.25. And approve appropriation ordinance 0505 2015 in the amount of 64,148.23. Any comments or questions on any consent agenda? So moved. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries by vote. Um, to Sailor.
front end work is $569.15. Um, that's parts and labor. Um, and then again, we have, uh, I don't remember the actual figures of what the quotes for tires were. Um, so we'll have, uh, I'm just going to estimate five dollars $600 on that. Um, and then as well as the other um, minor repairs, um, as far as the blower motor on the uh, heating AC and window bezel, window motor, um, and all that. So estimated total um, to get it back into shape is uh, somewhere around $1,500, $2,000. Um, probably closer to the 1500 side, um, but again, some of that parts and all that kind of stuff is estimated as far as the labor and stuff because they don't exactly know what they're going to have until they actually get into it. Um, according to the dealership, they still have one black 2013 Charger uh, and then one dark blue 2014 available. The cost of that was 21? 22. 22. 22 even. So if we were to purchase, yeah, how much is in your fund right now? If I remember right, it was sixteen thousand seven hundred percent right now. We have five thousand now, and then uh, we have uh, what did I tell you? Eleven thousand. Eleven two. Eleven two seventy sixteen two. Did you check that yes, to make sir. sure? We paid cash for that. We didn't lose it. So you're about 1500 short on the car outright. We can apply this. Right. Or right. Good. But again, I do, I do want to point out again that I do need some cushion and I have a lot of labor and the console and equipment and stuff in the car as well. Um, we can, if, if, if we take the insurance offer of totaling it and they follow through with paying for the equipment to be put in, we can absorb, you know, it's not going to cost as much as far as that goes, but I mean, a, a new console, you're looking at around $300. Um, is the, that one like we put in the truck? Yeah. Um, the switch box and sire that are in there are both... They've been in there, they were in the cars longer than I've been here. They need to be replaced because we got buttons broke. Um, and they're older, basically just older technology. Wouldn't that siren or that switch box and all that be in that center console then? Or do you still got to buy them? No, the, the, bo the switches and stuff don't come with the console. The console is, yeah. just, is just what you put everything in. Okay. I um, thought it came No. So. No, that would be nice. I mean, I. I would say by the, uh, the, the lights that are in the rear of the crowd bit can go back, to go into the car. Um, the lights that are in the front are vehicle specific, so they, they bolt basically to the headliner and the visors. So that can't, that's not going to fit. Um, it's probably going to take about $1,000 to get console, um, siren, switches, headlights to the And what we say the car was with the uh, extended warning? Total dollars? The, there was, they didn't give me an estimate or a price on extended warranty, just the car is 22000 And that, I, I'm pretty confident that's $75,000. 70, like 1800 bucks or something like that to put the warning on the pickup? Yeah, the pickup was 20, the pickup was 22000 also. I think we ended up paying 24 I thought it was like 1800 bucks or yeah, something was, to, to extend the bumper and bumper. It was, it was somewhere around there, yeah. Twenty-four. It was a little over twenty. Twenty-four thousand. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what would be about forty-five hundred dollars short if we did the extended warranty? So, John, what can we do there? Can we take it out of the general budget? And then... Well, the police fund is in the general fund, so uh, and he's. He's got some for his repairs and stuff, but not quite that kind of money. And that also takes care of his uh, incidental repairs, you know, on both vehicles throughout. Um, I think we ought to keep 
three to five grand in that account for just anything that weird would happen. I don't think you want to deplete that fund down to nothing. Okay, so basically if we were to do something like that, we'd be looking at financing around $10,000 for the, the lease. Yeah, the original figure would have been um, if we could pay because it was $22,000. Right. If we could basically write a check for 11000 finance the other 11000 then that was going to leave five to 6000 in that um, okay. capital outlay for other equipment and that kind of stuff. Um, but also you have this other <coughs> Well, but yeah, that's 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 not, that's not including okay. the, the other money. So, in essence, we could just put that on top of yeah. the 11000 and say actually pay 15000 um, Yeah. We're still going to be basically borrowing 10000 Right. Yeah, you would probably have two, two years of lease payments. Right. But after the you first, that, but after the first year, they'll be actually 10 grand go back into that again. Yeah. Yeah. Should be. Yeah. In 2016. Right. right, but it happens on January 1st. It happens whenever we do it. Right. We can do it January 1st or we can wait until December 31st. It's whatever you need. It's kind of sitting there. Yeah. It's budgeted yeah. and it's there. Like the eleven thousand two hundred is budgeted. We haven't made that transfer yet. We certainly can. When the red pickup goes over, do we? Does that? Does the police department have to pay the electric department or the city department for that pickup? It's a white pickup. The white, the white pickup. Yeah, yeah, whatever one it is. No, when we made that motion, it was just trade right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think they want to pay for. Second, no. 
with you. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, when I added the agenda uh, several years ago, we purchased some body worn cameras. And like anything else, we kind of ended up getting what we paid for it. So, you know, we, we were starting out with them. Uh, we didn't want to spend a whole lot of money because we wanted to see how it was going to work for us. Um, and the benefits we got from them were, were good. Um, the problem is, again, we've had issues with the ones we bought. We spent about $75 on them. Um, they've been hit or miss. Um, and now we've got to the point where we got one that wants to be charged. Um, we've got others that just work intermittently. Um, so basically, for almost the past year, um, I've been researching um, body worn cameras since they became a real hot topic. Um, I researched a lot of companies, a lot of items, um, and basically come up with one that uh, we as a department feel uh, would be a good purchase. We have $1,900 in the uh, diversion fund right now. Um, the last time we used any money out of that was uh, several years ago when we bought digital steel cameras um, for crime scenes and stuff like that. Um, the cameras are $300 a piece. Um, we'd be ordering four of them. Um, and the total price would be $1,199.96. So basically... $1,199.96. It's actually two two ninety nine ninety nine dollars piece is what it is. Anybody cares to look at it? If you have questions or anything like that, um, otherwise I'd be asking permission to uh, take that money uh, from the diversion fund to make that purchase. How does that thing give any money back in? Right tickets. When people take a diversion and pay that, they have it not put into their insurance. So I would need a motion to approve the support. 
one more possibly, but I don't think he's turning his application yet. So currently we have Judy Locker as the assistant manager, lifeguards of Quincy Smith, Carissa Brown, Courtney Brown, Katrina Brown, Teresa Christie, Tia Smith, Sarah Steinman, Allison Smith, and Trisha Wade. So I would need a motion to approve the hire of the people listed. So um, assistant pool manager would be at 750 an hour, all the cards would be at 7.4 an hour. Well, let's discuss that now. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you're, you're giving somebody who works inside an office, and these girls go and gentlemen go out there and 
save your kids' lives if something happens to them at the pool. So, I realize there's seasonal help, and I know that the city gets by with, you know, being able to pay them a little less, but I think for all that they do, working in the hot sun like they do, and the responsibility they take on. If I may speak to, as the manager last year, we actually ha have lost um, two guards that won't be coming back this year um, that had been here with us for three or four years because um, they just couldn't hack it with their college expenses and different things. They both left to go to different jobs where they made more money. And they'll still be in our community, but they will be working for our community. And if they don't do full, they at least do half of what they have to pay to get certified. So, I'll make a motion that we reimburse them for their certification. Second. Is there any further discussion? Troy, would that be in lieu of getting a raise per hour mm -hmm. or on top of also getting a raise? No. I think in, okay. in, lieu of, in, lieu? in lieu of getting a, getting a wage okay. increase. So. Reimburse them for their uh, expenses. Okay, well, we got two different motions on the table. Okay. Right now, the motion on the table is to reimburse their certification at 100%. Okay, so I'm assuming you're seconding a motion. Alright, so I have a motion and a second to approve 100% reimbursement of their certification fees. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Now, I heard some conversation about doing a raise in addition to that. Did I hear that correctly? Okay. Does somebody want to make a motion? I make a motion that we give them a dollar an hour raise too. Okay. Does that include the assistant pool manager? Yes. Okay. Do I have a second? Yes. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 3-2. Some other issues about some equipment there at the pool. Yes. So I don't know if I need to discuss that with Mel and bring it up at the next council meeting. Would that be better? Okay. Why don't you real high dollar stuff? We can, get, we can take care of that. Why don't you talk to Mel and then if there's something okay. that needs to come back to council, that would be that okay. would be the time to do it. All right, sounds good. Okay. Thank you guys. I appreciate it.
be the phone services, but uh, anything we could. Like I say, I, I can see what he can do for us. I'd really like to see it. I'll say, I'd, I'd make a motion to hire Kevin Davis or a local farmer. Just let's get it done so we can have it done before the Jubilee, tomorrow they leave. Second. John, second. All in favor? Opposed? If you are not going to be able to get it done by tomorrow, maybe we can keep it above the snow. Well, it will be a factor. <coughs> if you hire somebody, they'll get it done. Okay. Now, where are we at on the playground equipment for Cornwall Park? Uh, with everything else we've got going on, it was delivered. You know, back last September, yes. but there was damage. Part one of the larger pieces was damaged, and it was just delivered and replaced in the March, so it, it, couldn't, it couldn't have been put in anyway. So. Okay. Could so you that's, we have plenty of funds in that account, right, Tony? For no funds? Yeah. We have. I'm sorry. Is it, didn't, uh, wonder, wonder, Kevin Davis pay for some yeah, of that? Yeah, yeah, I just, uh, yeah, pay for no yeah. That, that doesn't include, uh, well, there's only 183 of that is principal. Okay, so we have like 20,000. Can we hire some money for that in since we're so far behind? And I know they go like that with that. When I talked to Kevin, he thought they, they would. We'll find out about that. Yeah. There's a good price, I guess. Well, I'm sorry. If you want to get a price, you know, that'd be the first step. So, you know, if they do that, it's better. And if you could get some quotes to have that done and have them back from the next council meeting. Also, um, what about all the potholes on 4th Street? So, do you have anyone else that wants a job? Or are you nope. have applications? I have, I have out? one guy, and he lasts a week, so we're right back. I have one more uh, applicant I'm going to bring before the council next uh, for the summer help. So that will. So, are we advertising for help? Yes. Now, how long do you give the application to the Okay. What, what would the county charges to come in and fix it? started looking at the metering update on the engines at the power plant and, and Mike from Mike Smarter from Mid States giving a price at that time and we've budgeted money to do this so that we have communication with Midwest Energy and they know what we're generating and we know what we're generating and that way when Greg goes to figure the bills why everything is is uh, taken care of and Mike has given me a price to install the metering and the communications between us and Midwest Energy of twenty three thousand eight thirty five. I don't I don't have my budget sheet with me, but I think we budgeted thirty five thousand dollars for that. So there's more than enough to take care of it. Um, I don't know how soon they would start. These guys have worked in our plant since nineteen eighty one. There's nobody else ever touched the panel board and that stuff and so it's not a type of deal that I would like to bring another party in. These guys have all the blueprints. They've done it all from start to finish, and, and uh, I'd like to stay with them. 
So what it would do is it would it would um, uh, meter all three engines. There would be no outage involved in uh, getting this tied up up onto the bus bar, and like you said, communication out to where Midwest Energy can tie right into their stuff. So anyway. So you said you, you're pretty sure you've got 35,000. I think, yeah, I don't have my sheets are down on my desk. Is that on your professional services? Yeah, yeah I think it's it was, 35,000. 35, you've used uh, 2,000 of it, so you have a remainder of 33,000 on that line item? Yeah, but. yeah. I think we figured last year when they when they figured it was like 28, and, and they've come up with a different way to combine these into one meter so that we can just go through them and, and take all three engine readings off of one meter. So. Uh, it's cheapened it up about five thousand dollars to what it was, and that would be plus any tax. So, Jeff, what what's the benefit of doing this? We know what we've generated in, in Midwest Energy. If we push anything back to them, then we get to deduct that. At this point in time, they have no way of knowing if we if we test an engine and we put it on the board and we push power back to them, we get no recovery for the generation that we push to them. Um, it's also um, a whole lot more accurate than the mechanical meters that we have in the panel board now that we're putting in at 92. But Midwest Energy gets to see what we're doing and it's, and it's a, a better deal for them too. I think it was their request the first time around to even get it so that they could see it. So it's kind of, we'll joint, it <laughs> kind, of, kind of a joint effort. Well, we built the substation and gave it to them, so I guess, you know, Years ago. Well, how much how much electricity do we shove back their way in a given year? We haven't tested anything for quite a while, but on the average, I'd like to push eight or ten thousand a month back. But we don't do it because we're burning fuel and not getting any kind of recovery out of it. So what we've only done is just ran when it was dark. But my guys aren't learning much when they can't go down and generate during the day, and that's something that they really need to spend more time on. I think they've been really good so far getting stuff on in the dark the week that I was gone um, they put they put an engine on and got you out of the dark in about 17 18 minutes so they're really doing good but but uh, we have no recovery for for what we do push back to them whatsoever and no way to calculate it and I will tell you that from the federal reports that we filled out this for we do this on a yearly basis that right now from what we buy from Midwest Energy and what we sell through here <coughs> with street lights and everything else, we're still about 11.7% loss, which is fairly high. Some of it's due to metering. Some of it's due to generation that we push back, uh, stuff we can't account for. We know that we have some transformer banks that are too big. We, When I came back a year ago, I, I'd set up a program where we, we read the the load on our three-phase meter banks, a lot of the big ones, like at the school and those, and we know whether our transformer banks are oversized or not. So some of these we have knocked down in size, and we do them during the winter when when the load is not as heavy. But um, the loss is fairly high, you know. And whether it's whether it's a combination of metering and, and plant and that stuff, it's going somewhere because we're buying it. So. It's just another way to keep track of what's going on. If we did shove back eight thousand a month, what kind of a hundred dollar figure is that, Jeff? You know that off the top of your head? Well, I'd have to know what the cost of fuel and that stuff is in order to do it, Bob. It all it all enters into it all enters into the cost. So do you have just a ballpark? It usually about eleven cents a kilowatt, but we won't get that. We'll only get wholesale back for it is all we'll get. We might get a nickel. We might get a nickel. Can you can you come up with some hardcore figures on this instead of just guessing and maybes and rights? Come up with some figures. It on also this depends. It also depends on on the time of day, the wages. You know whether it's summer or winter. I mean, there's a lot of variables. I can figure just you know just rule of thumb what it cost on a say a day during the week. Sure. Okay. Sure, I can do that. And our truck's getting closer to home. And whether I should bring that up or not, it's at Ponca City now. With a high pressure fuel pump waiting on it. So, one thing about it, the top of it's going to be new when it gets here. So, I guess I'll look at the bright side. 
of course, Alltech's not very happy. It's going to cost them about $4,500 to fix it, but they assured me that it should be done maybe even late this week. So that's where we're at. That's all I got. So here, uh, I wanted to, to ask the council. We've got the way the utility ordinance is set up now. There is a hearing mechanism that somebody can test whether they can have their utility shut off or not. Uh, that hearing officer has always been the city clerk. I'm suggesting to the city council to allow me to amend that ordinance to appoint somebody in an elected position, preferably just you know, like me, either the mayor or the Council President to act as a hearing officer so to remove an employee from having to uh, uh, do this. I'll make the motion. Well, I get that ordinance by next <laughs> and, and, and we, and we president can, would be <laughs> We can do it as a president. Yes, uh, president ought to make that decision. In all honesty, I think you have, it ought to have, like you and him, or him, however you got to word that, in case somebody is not present. Right. With preference on the president first, though. <laughs> Mayor, <laughs> a, a hearing officer and vice hearing officer. Mm -hmm. I mean, finish. We, you know, it's we can certainly set up a mechanism where, you know, and, and, and make it sign. Just to list the title so that we don't have to make ordinance every time we have an election. Um, Mayor or president? That's what I was thinking. Mayor or president? Because otherwise, during hearing, the clerk acts as the clerk and as the hearing officer. And so John is having to get up on court documents and figures. And, right. and by that time, already worked with right. our customers. So it's like doing it again, right. only on a different, with a different hat on. How many of you guys as board members know what's going on with this deal that happened about five years ago? Do I need to give a little detail or are you kind of aware of what's going on? I think I'll go over one. Okay, I'll go over it real quick. Back in, uh, I believe it was 2010, Let me look real quick here, 2010 is when it was noticed, I'm guessing. Uh, at my house, through my meter, it showed that I was using very large amounts of water. Um, I've got the papers here. The sh I guess they're their meter cards, meter reading sheets. Um, I mean, we're looking at 23,000, 36,000, 30, 36, 41, all the way up to 48,000 gallons of water. Okay. Long story short, I talked to a couple guys from the city. They told me it was possible that I had a leak at my house, okay? I went through several situations at my house to find a leak at my house. There's no leak at my house. 
I replaced toilets. I replaced five faucets. Bob was even going to help me do a pressure check on the line before the situation ended up being fixed. When the situation went away was when the city come down and fixed the meter, or did whatever they did with the meter. I shouldn't say they fixed it. It shows right here in the paperwork that the meter was replaced on August 5th. There are some discrepancies in the paperwork that I have as far as the meter readings and others. I guess I'd like for you to put yourself in my shoes just for a minute. I paid the bill on all of the gallons of water that went through that meter, whether they went through there or not. And I feel like I need to be reimbursed for some of those gallons of water. And, and just to, not to interrupt you, Mr. Claus, just so that the, the council knows, there was a hearing, was that last week, John? 28. That we set up, and you know, at the time, John acted, city clerk acted as a hearing officer. The, the mechanism provided in ordinance allows for hearing in order to challenge whether somebody's utility should be set off as turned off, turned off. Mr. Claus at that time brought everything up to we're now paid in full. So utilities were not shut off, but the ordinance does not provide for the type of addressment that he's requesting. And I simply said that that needed to be brought back to the city council, which is so he is where he needs to be in the eyes of uh, whether everything, all payments of the payments. There's no way to shut off this utility at this point, but there's apparently still an issue about whether the city owes him money for clear back in 2010, which I think he's attempting to address this time. Okay, but so I'm going to assume that, or I'm not going to assume. Did you, at the time, address the council at that time and ask for a refund? Yes, I did. Okay. I have a letter here from Knappenberger Law Office, who was our city attorney at the time, dated February 18, 2011, which states that they've made the adjustments that they've made. And John, John showed me that letter in the hearing the other day. I have no memory of getting that letter. <coughs> I'm not going to say I didn't get it. I have no memory of getting it. I also have no memory of a $141 fuel, or not fuel, I'm sorry, sewer. They have reimbursed me $141 on the sewer. Okay. I didn't know that either till just the other day. I guess part of my theory there is that they felt there was an issue enough to reimburse me for the sewer, then why isn't there a big enough issue to reimburse me for the water usage that went through that meter that nobody can know where it went. I mean, I've talked to several guys on the city that said that if I had 50,000 gallons of water running through my meter over there and a leak, not only my property, but the neighbor's property would be flooded as well. My grass is dead. I don't water it. Okay, well, again, this was four, four and a half years ago. Yes, it was. So, and the council at that time addressed it and did what they felt was fair. So now you're asking this council to revisit the issue. I guess I am because I was not aware that they had made that decision that they were done with it. Like I said, I have no memory of getting that letter. Nor the $141 reimbursement, which John explained to me that they'd done that through the bill, so I probably wouldn't have known about it, since my wife takes care of that stuff. Scott, it's been a long time for yes. me to remember, but I think what the council decided on, if we even had a leak in the can, which I think we maybe had a leak in the can, if it didn't go through that meter, if it went through that meter, it would have been on that side of the meter anyway. And so that's the reason they didn't choose to do away with the actual gallons that went through the meter, but they felt they would look, uh, reduce the sewer charge just to kind of help work with you. I'm, I'm going from my memory, and I'm not sure that's correct. John, do you remember something like that? You know, I don't think I was in on 
all of the executive sessions and so forth on that. I know that we were instructed to do that adjustment. Well, that's the way I remember. So where where did all the water go for all them months? You know, I guess, like I said, I'd like to, what I'd like you guys to do is put yourself in my shoes. If you'd went through that and you'd paid your bill for that many gallons of water, and there's no evidence of that much water being used in a leak or anything else, wouldn't you want a little bit of your money back for the water that you've spent it on? I mean, that's where I'm at with the deal. I think I way overpaid water bill and I think the city owes me a refund on some water usage there that I didn't get use of whether it was in a leak or not because if, if there was a leak I'm sure there would have been a lot of green grass down there a lot of water wet mud which there is none has been none in 10 years let alone five if council wants to address me with any questions we can we can do so I'm not speaking for council at this point. I'm speaking as the mayor. Um, in response to your comment, as far as wouldn't you want to be reimbursed? Me personally, I wouldn't have paid the bills. Well, then they shut you off. Been, That's what yeah, we was going through the other day. Been, but, but I would have gotten it resolved. I would have been down here every council meeting trying to get it taken care of, going through whatever hoops I had to go through. I wouldn't have waited four and a half years to readdress the situation. I agree. That's me personally. I agree with that. And I was going to let this go for a while just to make sure that the water usage stayed stable. And I think you all know as well as I do that our lives are busy. And I let it go a little longer than I should have. Time gets away very quick these days. I don't understand where, where you're coming from, Scott, but where the council already did the reimbursement and you paid all your bills and now you're coming back four and a half years later um, wanting, us, wanting us to do something that the other council had already done. I wasn't aware the council had done anything, I guess is the point I'm trying to make. Or I wouldn't have, I would have right. still been coming up here. I said I had no recollection of that re a letter that she showed me when I seen it the other day it was the first time I ever seen it as far as I know now I'm not going to say that it didn't get mailed it didn't come to my house I didn't right. see the letter to know that w that was going on I also did not know about the $141 refund reimbursement whatever you want to call it I remember when Dawn made that resolution I left here the night when we discussed that. Uh, the last I remember hearing was council said that they would discuss it and let me know, and that was the last I heard about it. Okay, are you talking recently or? No, that was four and a half years ago or whenever it was. Said so I don't recall there being a decision made that night when we were here in council. It was going to be discussed and I would be let know. Well, the letter from Mr. Knappenberger was notification. They were letting you know what they were going to do. If I got it, yes. If I saw it. I agree with that. If, if I got it and saw it, then yes, that would have been great notification. If I could interject a little something that was something that was decided in executive session, which never, never made a decision in executive session. And that is true. That all went to executive session at that time. Again, I understand where you're coming from, but if you're asking the council to deal with an issue that's four and a half years old, that there's only one of us on the council at this time that was involved at that point in time, and I don't know how we can we can go back that period of time and, and make an adjustment on your bill. I mean, I understand where you're coming from. That's kind of all I'm asking. Go back and look at what I used in water. Go back and look over the last four years. I think that'll be plenty of time of what I've used now that they've done whatever they've done. 
and the problem has been solved. The issue with the hearing the other day, the reason that bill hadn't been paid is because I was under the impression that part of that bill was back from that time. Because that's when I started getting the little late red cards that showed amounts of money and they just kept getting bigger. So I figured it was just from that and it was tacking on interest and fees and everything else. That's why I hadn't paid it all this time. When John explained to me that that had nothing to do with that, I settled up with her on that. Right, but... So that we could come back and deal with what had happened previous to that. Mr. Clark, can I ask just for clarification what exactly you're asking counsel to do? Are you asking for a refund or are you asking that they just say they're sympathetic to your cause? I mean, I, I I'm asking, I spent dollars after dollars after dollars not to eat, not only to find the leak, but paying for the water that I supposedly used every month. So I guess I'm asking for a refund for some of that money back that I shouldn't have had to spend. And do you have any idea what the city, what you think the city needs to refund you? I think it'd be pretty simple to go back and, and figure what average over a month is used and then refund me for anything above that. Or you could go on an average for the whole year and then refund me anything above that. At water, whatever it costs at that time. I'm not, I know water's more expensive now. I'm not asking for anything like that. At that time. And if that money, if they do that calculation, that money's less than $141, you would agree that you can pay. I exactly would, but I can guarantee it's not gonna be less than $141. Well, like I said, I, I know where Scott's coming from, but I just don't see how we can go back four and a half years on something that was already quote unquote decided. Well, like I, said, I think it was, yes, if it was ex decided between you guys, that's fine, but it really wasn't decided between anybody else. As Terry said, there was never anything else public on that except for a, a letter that I supposedly got. Yeah, well, was that do you remember that in open session? There was no open session. It went to executive session. Yeah, there was a lot of discussion in the executive session. I do well, remember, I remember that. that. And I, I remember them instructing Don to write the letter. And that's, I, I couldn't say one way or the other whether yeah, anything yeah. was in there. Can you look back on the minutes, Jonah, for the next meeting and see if there's anything in there where. <laughs> but I remember the deal. And we, the council come up with the, with the assumption that if, if it would have been a leak on the city side, it wouldn't have went through the meter. And if it went through the meter, that would be on Scott's side. But I remember that plain as day. And I would agree with that 100%, but I'd like to know where that many gallons of water went if it went through my meter. And like I said, the one thing that really concerns me the most was of everything that went on, to try and correct the problem, the day, I should say the week, because I don't know exactly what day it was, but the week that the meter was changed in the can out front of my house is when the water usage went back to normal and has been, except for a month or two looking through the paperwork here, normal water usage for a household of four. Was the old meter tested? Yeah. I'd like to have a five minute attorney, counsel, client, executive session. Can I have a second? Second. Say good thing, please. Counsel, and the mail, and John. governing body understand where you're coming from and your concerns. 
we really feel like four and a half years later, it's, it's just too late to go back and revisit that issue. Um, it's my understanding that you have copies of all the reading cards and everything. Yes, ma'am. If you would like to go back and come up with a calculation of what you feel like the city owes you, or, or not necessarily what we owe you, but the number of gallons you think you were overbilled for, and, and bring that back to us, then we would revisit the issue at that time. That's all I'm asking. Okay. But we are asking that you go back and do the math. Okay, that's okay. fine. All right. Sure, we'll do that. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Alright, being no other business, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries, 5-0.